Hello there. Welcome to another episode. It is Ask a Photo Pro, and it is your favorite episode of the week. It is the photo review show, where I get to look at your photos. And actually, this week, we are looking at the second half of the photos from last week. Last week, we were looking at hero photos, vertical hero pictures, which I requested that you make. And now we are looking at the second half of the hero photos from last week. I think we have about 20 to look at. at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you this week's assignment. I already know what it is. I'm super excited about this week's assignment. So make sure you stay to the end to find out what that is. But also, let's not forget the importance of doing photography assignments. What I'm teaching you how to do is assignment photography. I'm an assignment photographer. I shoot for magazines. So I get a brief. I get a very tight brief and I execute portraits because I'm a portrait photographer specifically for my niche for magazines. If you search on Google right now, editorial portraits, Toronto, you'll see Steve Cardi photographer. That's how people find me from all over the world. And that's how I do it. So also, by the way, this amazing episode is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch and the members of this show. So if you are a member, thank you. You are the reason that we have commercial free content right here. And also, let's not forget the fact that the members are what sustain this channel. And also, if you want to chat, I have live chat happening right now. You'll see the live chat happening right here. If you want to participate in live chat, ask me questions, have your assignments looked at also have your comments featured you have to become a member of this channel and if you become a member you get the smoke baby i got a smoke machine and i drop the smoke if you become a member while i'm live and also again commercial free content because of these members let's get into your favorite show of the week it is called real photo reviews how you submit your photos is you have to be a member of the Discord. The Discord is a photography community that I've grown. I'm trying to connect a global network of creators. Photographers, creatives all hang out in my Discord before my show, during my show, after my show. Be one of those so you can network with other creatives and see what they're doing. <sighs> Let's get into real photo reviews. We are starting with, let's go to the end of the hero images that I've seen from last week. I think it ended with Spoon James. Ah, here we go. C Sig Photography. This is C Sig's first submission. C Sig says, long time listener, first time submission. Hope my hay saved my image right. This is from a photo shoot of an artist using scrap to integrate into his art. Shot with the 800D Sigma 35 on a cloudy day. This is C Sig photography with the first submission. C Sig, thank you for submitting. Thank you for submitting. I appreciate you. Off the top, there's a couple of things that look a little bit odd for me for the hero shot. Number one, he's not wearing a shirt. So the, him not wearing a shirt is very distracting. Um, he's not wearing a shirt. Not something that would normally be something that you would do for an editorial photo for a magazine. You wouldn't have him with no shirt if you were shooting him for a magazine. So him with no shirt is vanity that's vanity that's either his vanity or it's you wanting to look at him with no shirt on <laughs> one of those reasons it doesn't compute the next thing is is he is using a very sharp axe here and his hand is here and he is looking at camera instead of looking at what he's doing which also removes him from this whole thing the way that he's holding this barehanded it's not clamped down he's using um what's called like uh it's like a scrap saw it's not like a precision saw so it, it just for me there's so many elements of this that just doesn't work 
Um, and the, the no shirt, the nipple rings really for me start to be like, this is, this is more of like, there's like this sexual undertone to this picture that I think that is a little bit unnecessary. Um, I would reshoot it. I honestly, I would reshoot this to actually try to remove some of the unnecessary, I would call unnecessarily overtones. They're not really undertones, they're overtones. And also to fix some of the technical mistakes. If you're trying to make a hero picture of him, he's not sawing. He's just looking at camera. Maybe he's holding the sawzall. I think it's called a sawzall. <laughs> sawzall. Maybe he's holding the sawzall in order to like accentuate that. For me, this one as a hero picture, it's a miss. And it's just, it's just because of the elements. How you manage to do that is you look at a hero picture or you look at pictures of men who are working in the this kind of a field and you try to make hero pictures for Black & Decker or for Skillsaw or like some sort of a brand and you look to see what hero pictures they're using for their brand and that makes it so you're making shots that are closer and more aligned with the brand the no shirt vibe with the guy with the saw looking at you and like sawing something where his hand is down he it's there's a lot of misses on this one you got to think also logically when you're making these photos logically what's your viewer gonna think when they look at a photo like this it's just awkward body language and also the the rudder or this is called an eavesdrop running straight through his head the light is great you know like the thing is is that there's just elements here that got out of control i think and that might be because of your subject more so than you i hope this brings you value that was our first submission from c sig photography I would love to know what CSIG means, um, but thank you for submitting. And did you save your image correctly? Yes, I would say yes, you saved it correctly as far as your sizing and everything is definitely fine. All right, let's look at our next picture from Sebastian K. Sebastian's hero photo. Um, this is a hero photo um, done on a hike while Sebastian was out walking. Let's have a look and see what Sebastian K is up to. Let's go, Sebastian. Thanks for submitting. Sebastian's vertical hero photo. Let's go. And again, this is a stranger. So you're just meeting this, this gentleman while you're photographing him. Let's have a look. Good focus, good light. Good focus, good light. I mean, hero, it's really hard to grab subjects and make hero photos because you really need to like style them. I think his hand on the hip, hand on here, takes away from him being a hero. I think he becomes a hero when he doesn't smile and he's got his arms crossed and he's just being the boss. Or you sit him up on that fence you sit him on this fence here and then it props him and makes his head a little bit higher and then you lower yourself so you're lofting him a little bit makes him a hero I, I love the fact that you just grab somebody to make this photo I think just a little bit of body language and because it's not your friend it, because you're just meeting him and you're trying to get this hero picture out of him it commands more direction once you're giving him more direction, now, now you're able to actually guide his body language into the right headspace. I think that we kind of lost it a little bit in the body language, my guy, but still a very, 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 very good effort from Sebastian. Thank you, my guy, for submitting. By the way, if you want to submit your photographs, you have to join the Discord. The Discord is the place very easy you just go in the video description that you're watching right now and click join my photography community that's how you submit photos there's also instructions in the video link that you're watching as to how to submit photographs all right this is lindsay lindsay saying that she's been battling her her identity and wanting to step outside of the realm of 
Western fashion. Um, so this is shot with a Nikon Z6 II with a 50. This is Lindsay. Lindsay, for me, the biggest issue, thank you for submitting, by the way. I think the biggest issue for me here is the body language. It's like having a girl sitting down, leaning back like that, and then aiming up her body, just even if you're shooting with a 50, it just makes her hips here look so wide. It makes it really awkward for her to balance herself. And also you can see how red her hand is getting because of circulation. <laughs> you can see how, how red her hand is getting via circulation versus the color of her skin here. So body language, like her sitting and leaning back like that and you taking a photo is not the first, my first inclination. I just, I don't sit people like this to shoot photos. They're standing. They're standing in an outfit like this because it makes the outfit flattering and it makes you able to style her in a way that's flattering. For me right here, this isn't flattering. The light that's on her face is great, but her arm leaning on her leg that way starts to incorporate a little bit of extra you know what I mean? And this arm back here and then the way the clothes now flap, it just all of it. And sadly, the thing that we're seeing the most of is this big black block of fabric that you can't really make out. So her standing, her leaning, like something that's a little bit more natural just reads better. And if a person is sitting, they have to be leaning forward. They have to be projecting forward to camera. That's the only thing that really works i'm i like to think like a body language master and when it comes to shooting females like you have to be so crazy with your body language like it really does have to be like you have to nail it right off the top and also it comes from it comes from intelligent imitation Whenever you have somebody wearing an outfit, they have to be standing. It shows the outfit. Like, you'll never see me having a model sit or a subject sit that way. Because it's just, it's not conducive to the clothing looking good. It's all about making the apparel look amazing. And if the, if the person's not sitting or, or sitting in the wrong way, or it just doesn't make the clothes look good. So you'll never see me making my models sit down, not sit down in dresses, not sit down in jeans. Like it just, it, it, and if they are sitting down, which does happen, yes, it does happen sometimes. It, ha it has to be, it has to be real. It has to be realistic and it has to be projecting forward. So, um, and also you'll see, I do sitting shots like this where I'm punched in and it takes away from the fact that they're sitting. So, or it's like this and they're projecting forward to camera, you know, not, not leaning back. Like they're, they're carrying their own body weight. They're not leaning back on anything. These little adjustments, Lindsay, will help you so much. This guy's sitting on a chair backwards and he's leaning on the back of the chair. So these small things like crouching, these small things, like, especially with women, like really make it when you're shooting clothes standing standing small things Lindsay but I think what you'll notice like it's gonna make a huge difference with your photography now that I'm mentioning it look at how odd the body language is and look at how wide her hips appear based on the fact that you're shooting up her body it's just practice hope this brings you value Lindsay let's go Lindsay thank you for submitting all right let's see another photographer see another shooter shooter that was Lindsay everybody all right who's next Explorers this photo came from a studio session I did with a client with my Nikon D3200 this is Explorers hero picture Explorers PA I like this a lot. I like this a lot. The framing is, the framing is odd, but I don't hate it. 
the, what I'm really most concerned with is the file quality. Um, I'm most concerned with the file quality. And if you actually did this orange in post, I see the highlighting, I see the edging that's happening on his fingers and around the whole thing, which makes me think that you did a close crop. Um, and also the grain difference, the difference between the grain here and the grain here where there's no grain and then there's grain here. So for sure, I can tell that you did a close crop. I mean, for me, what would make me the most happy is if you learned technically how to do this properly. So you're not like get an orange no seam. Learn how to light this in such a way that pushes the shadow off the background and actually do this in such a way that's not using crutches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because honestly, I was about to give you the 11 out of 10 rating because on the swag factor, you're very high on the style. It's just like because you're so high on the style. I'm going to look at it closer and I want to make sure that it's not all style and no substance. And when you start getting in and noticing the sharpness and noticing the close cropping, then the photo falls apart. And you have to understand hero pictures are made to be on billboards. They're made to be on billboards. So when we look at photos and we see them close up, let's go. Vazuro, welcome. When you look at my photos and you look at them close up, they don't fall apart. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I shot this on a black background. Let's go, Justin. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you. When you see this on a black background, it's because I shot it on a black background. So it's not close cropped. So it's like having your work at a quality that it holds up if someone clicks it and enlarges it is something that's like super super critical like we can't we can't have our work falling apart once it's under scrutiny like once someone wants to see it close it can't fall apart so that's the thing that we have to make sure that we're mastering i hope that brought you value explorers and again, this is Explora's image for me. Such a cool idea, but we got to nail, nail this in the post-production. You're shooting also with an older body. Low ISO, man, you got to shoot at ISO 100. I, like when you're shooting in the studio, you got to shoot at ISO 100. And if you're shooting with lights that aren't lights that are like hot lights or LEDs instead of, or continuous light, I'll say properly, continuous light instead of strobes, your ISO is way up there. And then that introduces noise. So one problem sort of begets the other, but we can fix that stuff. It just takes good hard work, my friend. Thanks for submitting. All right, let's see our next shooter. That was Explorers PA. Our next shooter is April. April says, here is my hero image featuring Brooklyn's T taken with natural light on my a7r3 um let's look at april's hero picture april let's go april very much a hero picture april very very much a hero picture and i'm giving it an 11 very 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 good job april very good job i like this very much this is technically very good. I mean, funny enough, the sharpness of your photo exceeds the sharpness of the printing of this tea bag. Like, well, the, the bags of tea are inside this container of tea, which is also a zip bag. But look at your sharpness. There's no grain. Like, this is the kind of perfection, April, that I expect from you. Look at the sharpness. Let's go. April, this is needed and necessary. Well done. Well done. Really good depth of field where the product is the thing that is tack sharp. So your eye can't help but go to the product first, which is really good. Now that we're 
looking at the product really closely. Thank you, thank you. Now that we're looking at the product really closely, now I'm starting to see the damage in the bag. Now I'm starting to see like, okay, this bag got a little messed up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's because uh, like you needed to like tap, tap, tap the bag and like pull it so so this divot isn't here you know what i mean this divot and this divot and this up here starts to be distracting once you're looking at it like this and impossible to fix it after the fact because of how it is and where it is and the kind of packaging that it's in so when you're buying your props to shoot you have to be inspecting every package and really really being careful because look at this set that you created you spent so much time on the set and making the set perfect but then the package is damaged so and also by the way oops no please don't open final cut um and also by the way i can see that this is not real wood I can see that this is not real wood. I can see that this is like a wood overlay or like a wood print that's supposed to be wood. So I know that this is real wood. I know that this is real wood. I know that this is real wood, but this here is not real wood because this gap, I would see that as a real natural gap and it's not. So, and I also would have texture over here in the shadow detail and it's completely smooth. So I think that you need actual wood to do these wood backgrounds because this looks, you're showing it and I can see that it's a little fake. So that's another piece of advice, April. But as far as how far your work has leveled up since the last time you submitted photos, Let's go, April. Really great job. Really, really, really great job. That is April submitting photos. Or a photo. All right. By the way, if you guys are liking this and this is bringing you value, if you're watching me on Instagram, consider jumping over on YouTube and saying hi. I would appreciate that because it's very hard for me to monitor my chat on Instagram and also do what I'm doing here. I got lots of things on the bubble here, so... Please bear with me. I got the uh, multiple cameras and I'm controlling all of this stuff on my own. So GT Ricci shot on my Sony a7 III with a 50 millimeter at 1.4. This is GT Ricci's hero photo. Let's look at GT Ricci. I like the attempt. I like the attempt. I like the attempt a lot and I like the idea a lot. The light is inspired. The light is definitely inspired. I definitely love this overlight coming from back here. <sighs> Where I have a problem is the pose. The pose, these hands, this hand, and this expression here and the angle of her face are all very, very unbelievable. Like it's very fakey and posy and her chin is touching. So because her chin is touching, it's giving like a weird sharpness to her chin here that looks odd. And this shadow here specifically on her chin, it's it's hard and it's, it's not as soft like, her chin not forward, let her like like this, and then it's all like a little bit softer. Have her make icon on have her make eye contact, which makes it a little bit more mysterious. And also like less pose. The extra pose is where you lose the reality of it. Have her just arms straight looking at camera, looking at you with that light. Now you have something that's super haunting and it's like, what is this girl looking at me for? Like, it's crazy. So I think the pose for me, although the hero idea, we lost it in the pose. So how you direct these girls and um, 
what they're doing with their fingers. We never hold our hands like this perfectly when we're trying. Like she has her nails on the glass, which we would have our hands on the glass, right? So if you look at this upper hand up here, this upper hand looks completely unnatural and this lower hand looks completely unnatural. And then the body language, the way her shoulders are and the way that that sort of the body and her head angle, this all looks too extra, like she's trying too hard. So again, GT, it's it's so close, but you have to control every aspect of it. You have to control even, you even have to control the pose. And by the way, the new pose is no pose. No pose, like that's the meta. Do an idea like this and then unpose her and have her just looking at you with like this penetrating stare like kind of blurred and not a focus now you have something that's magic or do a full profile where she's fully profiled and like not paying attention to you and now you have something that is high art i'm going to give you an example and this is the example if you're going to do something like this ever you got to look at zig Zian and see how Zigzian like poses these type of photos. And when you look at this type of work, which is adjacent to what you're doing, and you look at the poses, look at how now the pose is like another level, just another level. So this is what we're trying to do is not the pose in the traditional way that let's let this girl do a model pose, do something that's just more profound, bro. Cause it's 2024, you gotta do stuff that's profound. Look at Zig Zian and the way that she's using um, shooting through glass. Um, and these are all self portraits. This is this girl doing them of herself and also posing for the photo. So you can push harder. Yes or yes. I hope this brings you value. All right. That was GT Rishi. All right. Let's look at Scuba Steve taken on my weekend trip to DC. This is the guard of the tomb of the unknown soldier. Scuba Steve, thank you for submitting my guy. This was a hero picture, I would say for sure. This is a hero picture, but there's a couple of issues. The biggest issue is the framing. The biggest issue is the framing. And the framing because this is an eight by 10, or this is a, a nine by, oh my God, I can't speak. Let's try this one more time. This is an eight across this way and a 12 down this way. And when we go to print, when we go to Instagram, we lose one inch. I'm thinking that you guys might have heard me say this before. I think you might have heard me say this before, Steve. You're going to lose an inch there. And you're going to lose an inch there. And then what happens to your hero photo, Steve? <laughs> it looks very much like we're going to lose his foot. And we're for sure losing the top of the gun. It's because he didn't stop, eh? He didn't stop. He just walks towards you. You got the step correctly. You definitely nailed the step. But the problem is he's too close. He has to be much smaller in the frame. An 8x10. Um, an eight, oops. An 8x10 looks like this. Let me just punch this in just a touch. An eight by 10 looks like this. So we're gonna lose his feet. It's more like this actually, an eight by 10. So now you have a three quarter shot. So if you're using an eight by 10, now that's your eight by 10. So you have to be wary of that when you're shooting. And then also just how high the gun is going, how high his head is in the frame. It's all framing. It's all framing, and this is such a disciplined frame, Steve, so I, I know that you're probably frustrated listening to my critique because 
you have great leading line moving into him you have the horizon line low which is exactly where i always ask for you to drop the horizon line which is below the waist you check check but the headspace and this this being so claustrophobic like that's where we lost it so again you're so 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 close but again man you're swinging for the fences my guy you're swinging for the fences as far as like it being a hero shot yeah 100 percent. hard thing the light the way that the light is hitting him and rendering this little light shadow here that becomes again out of your control because you're taking pictures instead of making pictures if this was your subject you could just control him and put him wherever you want and pose him however you like with the light however you like but be trying because you're trying to take a photo that's happening and make it work with all the requirements it means you're going to miss a couple of things and this like the way this light is coming so hard on the side you shoot that at a different time of day. You know what I mean? There's so many different variables, but it becomes really hard again when you're taking a photo that you're trying to make fit into my exact brief. That only works when you're making photos. I hope this brought you value, Steve. All right. That was Stevie C. Ooh, Steve. Let's see, Mike Lilly, also known as Unscratched. This is shot with a drone. Shot with a drone, Mike Lilly. This is Mike's hero photo. Let's have a look at Mike Lilly. Let's go, Mike. Thank you for submitting by my guy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. A tricky, 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 tricky. Hero photo, drone. Horizon line is the first thing that I'm seeing is this horizon line dropping right through your main subject. The next thing I'm seeing is how high this is in the frame. I mean, your lines are very straight and disciplined, but I, I'm, I'm feeling like this is too close to this subject in order to really give me a sense as to what I'm looking at. Like I want you to be back like a lot. And I also want you to be lower so you can like levitate this and look up at it. For me, I feel like you're looking down on it because you're higher than it. And it's hard to make something a hero if you're not looking directly at it or looking up at it. So for me, this one's a bit of a miss, Steve. Also, it, we're losing exposure in here is about, I would call this a half a stop under. Over here is like a third of a stop under. Down here is a half a stop under. So we have good highlights, like this is good, but there's exposure things all through the photo that we're losing and missing. And when you look at it enlarged this way, it's a little flat, like it has too much gray and not enough um, black and white. It needs to be black, white, and gray. When you cut out the sky, you see different tones of gray without a pop white and a pop black. So small things to pay attention to when it comes to hero photo, Steve. Hope that brought you value. My, I mean, my God, Mike, that is Mike Lilly on Scratch. Sorry, Mike. I hope that brought you value. That is Mike Lilly. Let's look at Epic, my submission for the hero shot assignment. Good friend, always down to practice. Indoor location, natural light, EOS R 50 millimeter. Let's go, Epic. Photographer to watch. Let's go, Epic. Let's really get in on this and give it a little bit of scrutiny. Crop wise, I like it. I like it. Natural light, we have to watch that natural light doesn't get muddy. 
as you can see in here the natural light starts to get muddy and when we're actually really looking at it we can actually see that it's not in focus we can see that it's soft right and it's probably because you weren't on a tripod you can see where our focus needs to be in here between the white and the color of the eye and we're missing that focus it needs to be right here we need to nail that focus here on the eyelashes and we're missing that so uh, for me whenever whenever we have a shot it doesn't matter how much we love it if it's not in focus it's not a thing it's not a thing <laughs> like you do not get to pass off hero pictures that are out of focus and again epic you're a great shooter i've seen the work that you can do but natural light indoors slow shutter speed 50 millimeter lens that's not an l series 50 millimeter that you're shooting on the wider open side of wide open you got to shoot these at 2.8 you got to shoot them at f4 let's go renee thanks for subscribing i appreciate you you have to you have to shoot at f4 you have to shoot at like a reading that's going to actually make this rip rip sharp 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 and think about like think about your competition think about what your competition's images look like and when you look at my images like understand like nothing is allowed to leave your house that's out of focus it's just not it's not allowed it is no bueno so if you have a picture that is soft what you do is you curse and you scream and then you don't make soft pictures next time you check your frames and you zoom in on the back of your viewfinder to like 1600 percent, and you make sure that they're rip sharp before you let your model go um this is honestly let me just look back at your settings you said that you shot this at 2.5 at a 50th of a second sticks which is a tripod and shoot this at 2.8 and shoot at iso 200 instead of iso 100 shoot at iso 400 in order to get a little bit more f and a little bit more sharpness which isn't going to give any grain it's not going to add any more grain but shooting a 200 50 a budget 50 not my l series $3,200.50 at that aperture you're asking for it you know you got to shoot that you can't shoot that lens and it's proving to you by looking at your file that you can't mess with this lens any like any more wide open than um than 2.8 or you have to shoot way more frames way more frames because this the eye tracking should nail this and it should be rip sharp so make sure you shoot lots of frames that is epic submitting thank you epic i appreciate you hope that brought you value my friend mike stamatsi i i can't say your last name mike i'm just gonna call you mike because i always mess it up you need to phonetically spell your last name for me so i don't mess it up mike says this feature was made to be featured image on a company website was shot a couple of weeks ago so it disqualify if it disqualifies from the submission i accept it shot with the r8 28 to 70 at 3.5 um at four thousandth of a second at iso 100 this is mike mike thanks for submitting hero let's look at this as a cover Mike, I got nothing but love for you, my guy. Mike's in my master class and really pushing, really pushing to make sure that all your pictures are up to the Cardi seal of approval. Really good crop. I really like the fact that you gave me some headspace here, which I'm not sure if you would have been able to master without watching and participating in as many photo reviews as you do. Because you can see you've given me a perfect eight by 10 but you've also given me a perfect cover image. So 
I'm really happy with your crop. This is really good. One thing I want you to notice is the exposure. The exposure on his skin is low. And it's not low by much, but it's low. If you just look at his exposure here, and he's a white guy, and my exposure here, and I'm a black guy, and see how, yes, he's tanned and grizzled, but it's just dark. And it's dark by, I would call this, um, under by a third of a stop. Give this guy a bit of a third more exposure. Now what happens is this orange or this yellow shirt starts to pop a little bit more and it doesn't look muddy. And then the background pops a little bit more and it doesn't look muddy. I would love to process this picture for you. And also his white hat, his white hat, his hard hat. Hey, nice hat, buddy. His hard hat here, oops. His hard hat here actually reads a little bit better and then also doesn't cause um, like there's no even like this is our highlight here. It's this little bit of highlight. Give me a little bit more highlights, man. Give me a little bit more pop. So this feels a little bit more white, feels a little muddy right now. And then that's going to give us a little bit more exposure in here through his eyes. And um, it's going to make everything else just overall pop a little bit. Watch the claustrophobicness here on his shoulders. I would give him just a little bit more shoulder. And also take away this Reebok logo because the Reebok logo isn't relevant to this company. It's not relevant to the shot. It's not relevant to the industry that he's in. Just take away the Reebok logo. And now it becomes something that is more relevant and you're just focusing because i thought that this was some sort of like um you know construction shirt but when i look and it says reebok oh you got to take that away small things mike but i think a very 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 good job and i would say yes definitely a hero picture for sure yes yes all the things that all my issues you can fix in post with the exception of backing up a little bit, but I'm sure you have other edits, my friend, Mike. Whoo, how we doing on time? 6.42, I think we're doing all right. You guys having a good time? I hope so. I'm guessing you're passionate about photography, but navigating the leap from hobbyist to professional can feel like a daunting, solitary journey. You know that you have the potential, but what you need is a clear path and expert guidance. I'm sure you also know that photography school costs upwards of $50,000, or maybe you think you're too old to go back to school. That's where I come in. I can give you delivery of my patented Cardi method one-on-one. -on -one. It's not just any mentorship, it's a personalized deep dive into a proven six-phase system that I've developed over my 33-year career. Together, we'll walk through each phase of the Cardi method tailored specifically to your needs and your pace. Whether it's mastering the art of composition or understanding the business side of photography or even developing your unique style, I'll be there to guide you every step of the way. You can take the first step towards realizing your dream of becoming a professional photographer very simply. Enroll in the Cardi Method one-on-one -on -one mentorship today. With personalized guidance and actionable steps at every session, you're not just learning, you're actually transforming. My time is limited. There's only 24 hours in a day, so I can only take on eight shooters this way. So apply now to secure your spot and start your journey to becoming a professional photographer. Woo woo. All right. Who's next? Who's next? I appreciate you guys for watching my spots. Always. Wow. I always appreciate you guys watching my spots. All right. Let's get into our next jam who's next dan shot with the sony a6400 556 millimeter lens one strobe this is dan's hero photo let's go well thank you very much i appreciate that i appreciate that if you appreciate the fact that i'm doing my best trying to give you that high quality content thank you so much 
All right, let's get into Dan's photo. Thanks for submitting, Dan. Dan's hero photo. Just taking in the pose, Dan. That's the first thing that I like to look at. I, I'm feeling like, I mean, it's, I like the pose. It's not, um, like the image, I think that I think you need a second strobe in order to like, and also I'm trying to understand what your niche is. Are you shooting boudoir? Are you shooting like, I need to understand a little bit more what your niche is. Is this your niche? Um, if it's your niche, I can definitely help you posing the models a little bit more like this feels like it's kind of like 50s pinup style. I'm just trying to figure out like if that's like if there's a market for that where you are if this is just something that you're working on working through I see what you're doing I see what you're doing um I feel like exposure wise you're putting a treatment in here that's making like it look um old I guess but it, it's like it's not making the blacks snap and also you're bringing exposure up here in order to save the detail on the feet, in order to save some of the detail down here where there's no light. Thank you for the love, I appreciate you. So I feel like, do you have a light meter is my next question. Because I also think like there could be an exposure thing that's making it so at the size of your softbox, I'm sure you're shooting with a smaller softbox that's more set for portraits and you're noticing that the light is hitting the face of this girl, but it's really falling off beyond here. And with the exposure here versus the exposure here is very low and then down here and down here is almost non-existent. So Again, I need to try to understand what it is, what your niche is before I go full whole hog on trying to help you make this hero photo better. Is this a hero photo? I don't think so. I honestly don't think like it's a hero photo. It's a boudoir photo, which I understand. It's a pinup photo. Which I understand, but I'm just trying to figure out like where that fits into the marketplace. Like you're selling to women like this who wants to hire you to make photos like this, which means you're limited to how much money people like this have to pay you to make photos like this. For me, if you're still struggling for your niche, this isn't it. You know what I mean? This isn't it. It's like you're 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 depending on individuals to like make your millions depend on companies to make your millions make images that are valuable to a company a business that's trying to get something going forward and you'll find that you work you know trying to use these type of people as your customer you're going to find that you're struggling because you can only squeeze so much money out of somebody that's working a low frequency job so they're trying to model to make like extra money to make more like it's just a, a cycle <laughs> like and again this girl is not a model like model model so if you want to be a fashion photographer that's a whole other thing and it's a whole other type of photography so we need to find your niche Dan because and again I put so many things out there about my coaching so many things out there about portfolio reviews so many things out there about book a free 15 minute session with me so i can help you you need my help dan you need my help i can see that you need my help but if you're not using any of these resources you're just gonna continue to be lost and your life is going to slip away where you're making photos that nobody needs only this girl needs this photo and you do you really need it you know what i mean like make high frequency work for a specific niche and you'll always work like that's what you need to do so it's hard if you don't have that work yet you need to make it but you need to decide what that niche is before you make work and if you're not doing that then you're just blowing in the wind and wondering why you're not making a living at this. 
I try my best, my guy Dan. I hope that brings you value. I try my best, but I do also find myself repeating the same things over and over and over again. Seeing people clearly need guidance, clearly need one-on-one -on -one help, but you're gonna just keep, there's so many ways that you can that you can find your niche. There's videos, there's podcasts, there's episodes. <laughs> I've made so many episodes. These are the most profitable niches in photography. This is how to find your perfect niche. The most profitable niche is you. Like there's so many of these podcasts that I make, Dan. So many. So like, don't just watch the information. Act on the information that I share. All right. This is Cynthia Lilly. Um, this is her submission for the week. Shot in the Sony A7R3 with an 85. Cynthia, I need to understand. Thank you, by the way, for submitting. But I do need to understand what your niche is. I need to understand, are you an architecture photographer? Are you an interiors photographer? I definitely see that you understand composition. There's some perspective mistakes, like there's some line. If you're an architecture photographer, then there's lines that you can straighten. There's all of these things that you would absolutely already know how to do in Photoshop in order to make it so you get this line straight because it's parallel with this line. So you definitely need that line straight and you need these lines to run parallel if in fact it's like that's what you're trying to do and looking how this line versus this line works obviously there's going to be converging lines because it's it's gonna there's going to be converging lines naturally but what's important is that i have to under, have an understanding as to what niche it is that you're trying to master because as far if it's architecture like you have to go hard <laughs> like really you really have to go and push harder you can't just mail in anything this is a very like competent photograph but is it stopping the scroll is it something that i'm going to hang my entire magazine on i'm going to put this on the cover to carry an entire magazine am i going to put this on the cover of my annual report to like absolutely stop everybody and say wow what an incredible cover did you do the best you could in processing did you bring the most out of this image possible or did you just see something compose take a picture and submit it these are the questions. And again, you are not doing this exercise for me. This isn't, I appreciate you, Chess. This isn't, thank you for renewing your membership. This isn't for me. Like I'm, I've done this, I'm doing this already. It's not for me, this is for you. And I'm just trying to show you the level at which you need to go for anything. If I look at Behance and I search architecture photography, I like this should horrify you this it should if that's what you're trying to be because again I'm just learning about you Cynthia so I need to know what your niche actually is but if we search architecture in architecture in filter whoops in filter Hello. Give me my filter. Here we go. In creative fields, in photography. And just have a look at what's happening with architecture in photography. Like architecture photography. Let's just have a look. So when you're seeing what is like what people are, I mean, for me, this is even meh meh all right not a good example let me find a better one and funny enough that's given a behance award but i'm thinking more like this i'm thinking more like this like things that are more spectacular to look at that are worth capturing for your portfolio things that are more spectacular to look at and not 
quite as just commonplace. It, like, it can't just be juxtaposition. It can't just be you stood in a cool spot and saw this thing and took a picture. It can't. It has to be way, way harder. It has to be. Because if not, you just won't work. So this is it, it needs to be a destination. You need to be making connections with homeowners and architects and like taking this as far as you can possibly. Like, like that's the only way. If you saw something and you grabbed it and you're trying to apply it to fit something, no bueno. So again, this is the bar. Whenever you're trying to shoot something, always go to Behance because that it's not Instagram. Instagram is not the bar for anything. Instagram is free. Anybody can just put stuff up there. You know what I mean? So our bar has to be incredibly high, Cynthia. And for me, again, it fits the format, which proves to me that you understand composition. You understand how to shoot a cover, a double page spread, like that kind of stuff. Now, the content that you're putting within that format needs to also be at a way higher frequency. First thing I see here is this alarm box. Oops, wrong tool. I see this alarm box. I see this thing here. I see this thing here. I see this thing here, which are very easy to take out in post. Very easy. And they don't add to the photo. They don't need to be there. No one's going to miss them if you take them away. So small things, but, and also you could enrich the clouds. You could make that blue a little bit more poppy. You could make your lines a little bit more disciplined. Like there's things that you could do even with this photo to make it so much better. So ah, I hope that brings you value, Cynthia. That is Cynthia Lily. Thank you for submitting, Cynthia. Oh my goodness, we're almost at an hour. This is DC Robinson. This one's a bit tough, but I got a submission. My first shoot on the Sony 50 millimeter. It's a self-portrait. I want to be my own superhero and do this portrait thing. Um, DC Robinson, I appreciate what you are trying to do here. Thank you for submitting. DC Robinson. You do not sadly get to insert yourself into and make a self-portrait and call it a hero picture. <laughs> like you just don't. I'm happy that you got a camera. Happy that you got a 50. Happy that you're here as a part of this thing. Happy. But when you don't have a subject and you're trying to be a portrait photographer, you don't have a photo shoot. You don't like you can't sub yourself in because you can't direct yourself when you're trying to make the photo as the photographer and also be in the photo as the subject. It just doesn't work. And what you're wearing, the there's just too many elements here. And also the post production, like I don't know what happened. Like it looks like it's a reflection, but what you're doing in post is like I don't know what you're doing in post because there's some things here. There's there's banding that's happening here, which again, are you shooting raw? Are you processing at 16 bit? Are you doing all these things? And it's soft. It's not in focus. Like there's so many things because you're shooting yourself and you can't frame yourself and do the things that you need to do as the photographer when you're shortcutting. DC, this is shortcutting. And again, it just means you don't have a submission this week. That's what it means. Because what it, the alternative is you getting like the brunt of me telling you the reality that I think that you need to hear. You can't do this. It's like, look at where, look at where the masthead fits in. Look at where the masthead drops because your head is right at the very, very, very top of the frame. So the masthead doesn't fit in properly. It doesn't work as a cover that way. So that becomes a factor. And then, you know, I, I've said when it goes to Instagram, it becomes an eight by 10 and then you lose two inches. So you're losing that much of the photo. So. subject just get a subject get a subject and make a hero photo 
like if if i was a magazine editor and i've given you this assignment and i'm paying you money would you have done this i've said find a hero make a photo for the cover of my picture and then you to the editor you say this i'm the hero and here's a photo of me would you do that do you see ever to any magazine editor in the world ever when you had the opportunity to have your work in front of them would you do that you do the work to find the subject to execute the assignment you know what i mean or you bow out you say i'm sorry my schedule makes it so i can't say yes to this but i will be able to say yes to the next time that you ask me if there will be a second time and you know in the industry going to say no to a gig when you're saying that you're trying to be a photographer for a magazine that you say that you want to work for unless you have another job that day there is no no to jobs that are for you you know so how you treat these assignments is like a direct reflection on how you'll treat assignments in the industry it's a direct reflection Meaning, are you making time for them? Are you thinking about what I've actually asked you to do and then doing it? There is no mail-ins in life. If you, you get in what you put out, you get out what you put in. Totally. So, um, DC, for me, this is a miss for all the reasons that I said. I'm happy that you're here, but my guy, this is your career, not mine. Remember, this is your career, not mine. And if yes, I was an yes. editor and I asked you to execute this assignment and this is what you gave me, you would never work for my magazine ever again, ever. And if you don't take this seriously, how will you ever make money at this? So that's for you, DC. Again, please try harder my guy dc thank you for submitting all right let's get to our next our next shooter is chess optics chess 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 says that i live i live near brooklyn this is a t nice shot this is a hero shot from chess thank you for submitting chess For me, it's still like this photo came in before the taking pictures, making pictures um, thing came out. I see that you've stopped this woman to take a photo, but where this photo is happening, where this photo is happening, the location that you chose, the first thing I see is this box back here, which is hyper distracting. I also see these lines here of shadow i see the bike here i see these fire hydrant things i see these windows and that vent and this thing growing like there's so many distractions behind her that makes me go crazy here chess I and mean, i want i want to see like a more like thought out executed photo that's not like you're just grabbing the shot like you have two seconds to do it. If you don't slow down, you can't even see the stuff that you see that I see after. And if you actually look at this shot long enough, you'll see that it looks like she has elf ears because this ear is tucked behind a mask and she's got her mask under her chin. And then the second ear is actually tucked right into this shadow, which makes it look like she has elf ears. And then the hat's on her head like a weird way. Like it just, it just seems like it's not the hero photo that we're trying to get. And you're rushing, bro, through life like you're on fire. You need to slow down. You need to slow down so you can actually scan the scene and say is this the best spot for this photo is this the best spot for this photo here's the thing you want to shoot street portraits this is what people do they go around and they walk and they walk and they walk and they oh can i oh can i can I? it's like 
instead of standing in the spot that is the right light and an amazing background right there, right there. Then, then you literally, you spend the time to, uh, you spend the time to actually assess the location before you ask a single person. You look, you're like, okay, take a test shot. You're like, okay, good light, non-distracting. And then you stand there and wait. The person who you're supposed to photograph will walk by you and you say, hey, can I take your photo? And they say, where? And you say, right here, right here. Cause it's the perfect spot. It's the perfect spot. Cause you chose that before you asked for a person. What people do is they go out walking all over the place with no concept of the spot, the right spot to shoot the portrait. And then they just grab the right person in the wrong spot. And then they grab whatever they get right there. Because now that someone stopped, they're like, uh, okay, thank you. And then this happens. So Chess, I feel like, you're, you're not thinking enough of before you ask someone for the photo. Go to the place first. Non-distracting background, open shade, no harsh shadows. I'll say again, open shade. You've heard me say open shade a thousand times, open shade. But she's in shade up here, but direct light down here. So you're breaking all your own rules. And you've heard me say this stuff, but in when it comes time to actually do it, you're not doing it. So we've talked on the phone and I know that you have a lot of stuff and a lot of obstacles and a lot of things that you're dealing with, but try to make half the amount of photos, but make them all twice as good. How about that? Make half the amount of photos, make them all twice as good by slowing down, by slowing down. And also watch this review more than once. It will help you, I promise. That is... Chess. All right, Chess. Thank you for submitting. All right. Let's look at our next shooter. Is Liza Helder. Heeder? Heeder. Heider? Liza? Heider? <laughs> Liza. All right. So this is celebrating one of her favorite bands, uh, brands, Burberry. Um, straight to the closet, pulled Burberry, raincoat and scarf. Model Elizabeth wearing the coat inside out and backwards. Shot with the Nikon 8, D850, ISO 400. All right, let's have a look at Liza. Thanks for submitting, Liza. Liza's hero photo. Really good exposure on the skin. Really good exposure on the skin. Really good focus. One thing I'm watching is your edge. It seems like your edge is really straight. It, it just looks like a bit of an optical illusion. Um, if you're, I'm looking right here at this edge right here. So I'm just watching how straight, uh, I wasn't wrong. You see it is crooked. Okay, I thought that I was, I thought that I was going crazy, but you can see it is crooked. You see how it starts up here. <laughs> and then by the time we get to the end of the picture, it's down here. All right, that just shows you like I see everything. I miss no details. Next thing I see is why why include this entire piece at all? Why include this entire piece at all? Why not move her over and actually include more of the jacket? Let me show you something. Why not go like Oh, I got to bring it in like, oh, I guess I got to zoom it, zoomy. So why not crop it like this? Look what you added. This is what you added. Why not crop it here? It still gives you plenty of distance here between the head without, and especially at the scale that you're going to be doing. So look at this now. And if I scroll this the entire way, look at what that looks like. I can't do it this way. All the only thing I can do is say, 
you don't need all of this marble. It's unnecessary. All of this is unnecessary. What is necessary is back there. So you have to watch the wrinkles down here. I like the concept, the jacket backwards, inside out. I like this. I love like this is a great frame. It's it's so you're so close to being there, Liza. <laughs> the reason I laugh is it's because I'm an artist too. And it's like these silly things, like where you cropped, you can see that's the photo. Like, look at that. You know what I mean? Like, look at how now, how clean that looks, right? So it, I'm laughing because of that, because you included this extra bit and it's funny. And if you don't laugh at yourself when you make such silly mistakes, then it's funny. You know, you have to laugh at yourself. I'm also noticing small things like this down here, this rug or whatever this thing is down here. I'm also noticing this white line or a piece of drywall that's happening in the background. And I'm also noticing this little bit of trim down here, which looks low budget. For me, I would have lowered myself, lowered myself so I cut the entire floor out. So the picture, there's no floor. I would have moved her over so that edge ends there. And then I would have lowered myself to aim up a little bit at her to loft her and make her the hero. And you could have done all of that like right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's small, small things. And again, yes, I 100% agree with Alpha Monk that this is an amazing shot. It's, it's such an amazing shot. It's such an amazing shot. It's such an amazing shot. But it's like, it's like you're on 88.1 and you need to be on 88.3. It's like two ticks over. It sounds way clearer, way better. You know what I mean? But again, it's like sometimes when we're in it, I've been doing this for three decades. So I, I've, I've gone through this process with my own work so many times and coaches have ripped my shit apart for so long. I, I just, I really... I pride myself in seeing the unseen and also very much seeing the scene. I'm showing you the scene, stuff that's right there and I'm not even the photographer that's there. And I'm just asking you, hey, why not this, this, or why not this, this? Just trying to help you tune your own radio because I can't be there to make the photos. That's not my role here is to do the work. My role is only to be like a metronome, you know? to show you the beat of the industry and also show you what someone else's perspective is on your photographs. Because one thing we for sure need is perspective. And often with our own work, we're too close to actually be able to gain the perspective on our own work that we need. And that's where coaches and mentors and people who are just other pros that are a little bit further ahead than you can really help you. All right, let's look. We're in our last few photos. We got four more. This is Kai Creates. Kai says, hero image, red and blue. Um, 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 shot with a Lumix. If this is you, Kai, this is Kai Creates. Let's have a look at this picture. Thanks for submitting, Kai. You are trying to do some gelled light. What we are missing is the idea like of how we light a face. Like one thing that we don't ever do is put a flashlight underneath our chin chin and light upwards we just don't do that it's just not a thing unless you're trying to achieve like a halloween look so your under light from the front completely throws this picture for me it is no bueno because of what you're doing to your face you're putting wicked extra literally additional bags under your eyes because of how you lit yourself like you're also putting your nose shadow like which naturally goes right here nice and beautifully you're putting your nose shadow between your eyes which again i i just showed um just showed jill greenberg just showed jill greenberg and jill greenberg's work 
um, last episode. And if you look at how Jill Greenberg lights when she uses gels, and again, it's not good to imitate, but you need to use intelligent imitation if you're going to try to do some of these techniques that are super advanced. If you're going to do these techniques that are super advanced, you need to look at photographers that do it incredibly well. And also notice there is no under lighting. That is not a thing. It's not a thing. So don't ever have light low aiming up at you. It looks horrifying. So Kai, and also you're in the photo, Kai. Again, you can't make all of these photos just of you. I've said several times today, you're a portrait photographer. Find a subject. Find a subject so you can practice on your subjects. <laughs> Find a subject so you can practice on your subject. And look, look at this use of gels. Look at this use of gels. Look at this use of gels. You don't see under light occurring at all at all so don't don't be the odd man out and now that i show it to you this way and show you how with colored gel light you don't see under light it's not a thing now when i show you back your photo do you see what i mean do you see what i mean it's too video gamey it looks like you're trying to be a video game cartoon character and you're not photographing cartoon characters in this industry you're photographing real people and you need to make them flattering and flattering does not ever come from under lighting a face so um the light take that light from where it is instead of under here put it up here which is what we do this is why you see i oops my light camera's gone there you see my light up here it's my guy no under light kai and also kai this is probably the third photo in a row that you've submitted that you're in the photo or second you have to find another you've got to find a subject your girlfriend a friend someone on the street like go on instagram find people to photograph if you want to be a portrait photographer you're not trying to be a self-portrait photographer trying to be a portrait photographer. All of these tests that you're doing, you're wasting time because how many photos of you do you need when you don't have a portfolio? How many photos of you do you need when you don't have a portfolio yet? Make the portfolio with people, cool people. Find them on Instagram, find them on the street, bring them into your space, make photos of them, direct them, use intelligent imitation and make a portfolio that you can actually sell to the marketplace to get work. It's not going to work if you're just shooting yourself. You have to break the fifth wall, get out of your room, go talk to people, please. Oh, all right. That is Kai Creates. You don't want to be called Kai Creates Self-Portraits because that's what I want to start saying if I see another one. Kai Creates Self-Portraits. Create more things with more people, Kai. Come on now. All right, Kai. Let's look at Durell. Got her done, 15 minutes to spare. Let's go. Shot with the R6 24 millimeter. This is Durell's hero photo. Thanks for submitting, Durell. All right. Focus, focus, focus is the first thing. Before I, before I say anything, focus. This is at 100%. At 100%, this is soft. When I zoom in a little bit more than 100%, I see that it's soft. So what is it that's making your photos out of focus? What is it that's making this particular photo out of focus? Next thing I see is headspace. You see where I'm dropping my masthead and how the head is it's too high. And again, we've talked about this. You and me specifically, Durell. We've talked about this specifically. So when I see headspace up too high and out of focus picture and you're in my masterclass and my mentorship program and you're sending this in as something that you want me to judge i'm gonna say durell headspace headspace we know this one and i'm gonna say out of focus because we know that one too i'm also gonna say color balance this is i know you're lighting with gels but 
this picture is not color balanced correctly. It's very blue. If you look at the overall tone of her, her dress here, her dress is, is like white. The gelled color is up here, but there's this other thing that's happening in her skin tone that makes it look cold. And cold skin tone on Caucasian skin is not flattering. It's got to be neutral or a little warmer unless that's the overall look and feel of all your work, which it's not. You're still trying to establish an overall feel of your look of your work. So for me, again, this is like it's a bust. It's a bust. And the background, the the bu the bubbles, the background, the like you're just trying to do something that's like it's teenage stuff. It's teenage stuff that you're trying to do to make it look like a hero picture where you're shooting a elegant, sophisticated, not teenage woman. Do you know what I mean? So shoot something age appropriate and make her the hero as an age appropriate person rather than tutu and like funny things in the hair and the bubbles and the things that make that kids like, you know what I mean? That's just for me, my first initial <laughs> reaction to this idea, Durrell. I feel like you tried to make this way harder when really you could have shot a simple, classic, timeless portrait of this woman. Classic, like master your classic and timeless which you've heard me say again so many so many so many so many times so that is durell again so close durell but my expectations for you are high because you're using all the forms of education that i have to offer you're using them all so you're using them all you have to be acting on them all and like absorbing this fire hose of information that you're getting. You're getting overwhelmed. And I know that you're getting overwhelmed because you're trying our ideas that are just more complicated than they need to be. More complicated than they need to be. Seriously, just give me like a portrait. You know what I mean? Look at this, Jill Greenberg, simple portrait. Just simple, hero, simple, hero. Do something that's um, different. Try to be different. Okay, that is Durell Scott. We are in the last few. This is my brother Les shooting a photo of himself. Brother Les. This is the same brother from the same mother brother brother it's the same 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 like for me miss the miss the objective of this of this assignment we are not looking for who you think represents a hero we are not looking for you as a self-portrait like peter tosh like that is not what this is at all as an and also self-portrait again not a self-portrait assignment this is a hero photograph within your specific niche so big brother you're a car photographer you're like you're a car painter and an artist and you're trying to promote your shop so the hero photo is the perfectly painted car the perfectly painted detail shot with the right lens and the right light in the right situation to show that you make that kind of quality for people's work. The kind of picture that you can put on the opening of your website. That's like, it's an opening hero shot. Something that you can hang your business on. You can hang your business on a hero photo of what you do for your specific niche. So if you make, like, if you make cars like mirrors and you're not showing that, or showing you doing that perfectly it wouldn't you don't even need to be in the photograph you just need to show the result show the result that is your hero picture is the result of you working on a car for six months or three months or however long it takes you to get that mirror process so for me this is a full-on missing of the assignment <laughs> and not what I asked for, not what I asked for. This is not a self-portrait assignment. This is a hero photo of work at the highest level in your specific niche that you would use to launch a product, launch a magazine, launch a book, put on the cover of your, like, it's just, it's a thing that like, you hang your whole business on a hero photo. So 
it's rarely you. I don't, I, I don't have a single, and again, I didn't show a single one of my own photos. I mean, a, a single picture of me that would represent a hero photo, but I make them. Hero photos is all I do. I make hero photos almost like every time I'm shooting, I'm making a hero photo and it's never me. I'm trying to promote that person, that record, that thing that, that makes it the hero. So that's what I'm trying to get across is it's not us in the photo. It is our work shot in a hero way. This is a hero photo of Colin Firth. This is a hero photo of John Strombolopoulos. It's a hero photo of Warsami. Hero pictures. That's what we're, that's, that's the, that's the explanation is a hero photo. It's, it's not us. It's not a self portrait. And, and you can't, you can't word it into making it so. You can't articulate it or wordsmith it into making it so. I can understand like that's your interpretation of it, but I'm not asking for the interpretation. I'm acting for a hero photo. So when an art director says, can you make a hero photo of this car? You're like, absolutely. And then you make the hero photo of your car. It's not you sitting on the car being like, I'm a hero. You know what I mean? And when I deliver it back to you that way, you can see how preposterous it is to see self portraits in this exercise. You know, <laughs> has nothing to do with you has nothing to do with you and everything to do with your work. All right. We are in our last photo. This is Alpha Monk. This photo has some sentimental value. Um, someone, um, a friend asked him to capture some images of their family as one of them was suffering from cancer and only had a few weeks left. Storm coming with the gifted. Thank you so much, Storm coming for the gifted membership, my guy. Thank you appreciate you can a startup you just got gifted so um they wanted to leave a few words of wisdom accompanied by the images and they published it in a national newspaper the bottle was given to me as a gift for the work i created for the family i call it shining spirit this is alpha monk and his hero photo alpha monk thank you thank you for understanding this assignment and delivering me something so beautiful this is like, look at this execution. Look at this bottle, the reflections, the light, the gradients in the background. Alpha, make sure, here's a secret. Make sure that you're always processing at 16 bit first, because when you don't process at 16 bit, what happens is you get banding. Do you see here how when I'm scrolling through here, do you see these lines that are happening through here as the color is gradiating? This is called banding. And banding happens when you do not process at 16 bit. Do you see the banding that's happening here? Where as it's going in on the gradients, I actually see the steps. Do you see this? It's called banding. So. What you need to do is process, first of all, watch my video on processing, but you process your image at 16 bit, export it as a 16 bit TIFF, retouch it at 16 bit, save it at 16 bit, then make a JPEG from that file. So you won't have, like if you process in 16 bit and then convert to 8 bit after processing this bit this banding doesn't happen if you process in 8 bit just like normal and do something with this fine detail this is what happens my guy so 16 bit 8 bit i literally just talked about it and you just got you just got 8 bit look at this as a cover yo this is a very much a hero photo very much without question this is a hero photo and you knock this out of the park you get an 11 my guy good job that is remy it's time for photos of the week in this week's assignment guys you did a great job thank you for submitting everybody who submitted i appreciate you thank you for submitting know that this thing is difficult but i do appreciate you for submitting know that this whole thing this whole photography thing there is no mail-ins you're not actually allowed to mail in anything it doesn't work at all it doesn't work at all if you try to mail it in and 
I am not a gatekeeper. I am not the gatekeeper. I'm not a gatekeeper at all. I am just your competition. That's it. I'm just another photographer three and a half decades ahead of you. Literally, just I'm just three and a half decades ahead of you. And I'm just telling you something that I would tell someone who would like my assistant. And I'm speaking to you as if you were my photography assistant and you told me that you wanted to be my assistant in order to progress in your photography career. I would speak to you exactly like this. And everybody who I have done this with, they've turned out to be some pretty A-OK -okay photographers. Let's start with Corey Vanderplu. Corey Vanderplu was my assistant for two years. Corey ended up being a pretty okay photographer. <laughs> this is Christian Bale. <laughs> if you look at Corey's photography, Corey ended up being a pretty okay photographer by taking my advice. Javier, Javier Lovera. Javier was my assistant before Corey. Javier was my assistant for two years. He literally... He said he wanted to be a fashion photographer, so I helped Javier be a fashion photographer, and it looks like Javier did pretty A-OK -okay as well. One more, here's one more, Wade Hudson. Wade Hudson came to me when he was 17, and Wade was one of the sickest photographers I had ever seen at that age. At 17, this guy was an incredible, from Jamaica never been to toronto before came here moved here to become a photographer and look at the work of wade hudson he's been a pro since he's been 19. i dude this guy is like he's my little prodigy wade hudson and he's like 33 now he's got a wife kids a full life he's got an agent he's rocking out so you can see like this is this is how i talk to people about quality and then look at the quality that they then turn out because I speak to them like I'm speaking to you. So this isn't, this isn't just like, I don't just talk to you like this, or I'm not just trying to be hard or anything like that. It's like, no, no. If you listen to the ways, you'll be a working photographer or don't listen to the ways and keep doing what you're doing. Notice all of these photographers make photos, not take photos. Look at Wade Hudson. All of these photos, all these photographers make photos instead of take photos, all of them. No one came to me to learn how to take photos. Everybody came to me to learn how to be a fashion photographer, an editorial photographer, an advertising photographer, a product photographer, and here they are doing just that. So, again, it's on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's on you. Because <laughs> for me, I know how to do this stuff already. But if you're trying to mail it in, these are, this is just, these are people who are my assistants. They're all now working photographers and you should see what my assistants work looks like. Just because they're, I pick talented people to surround myself with and my standards are higher than yours. My, my standards are usually the highest in the room, usually, and they should be. If you're a photographer, your standards should be the highest in the room. If they're not, have higher standards. <laughs> Have higher standards. <laughs> have higher standards. You're saying, DC Robinson, you used the wrong pick? Is that what you're saying? Um, you're saying you used the wrong pick? Um, any images, any Im opinions on processing images in Capture One versus, um, versus Lightroom? No, none. I think that Capture One has some incredible, incredible, like, offerings like incredible options you know the problem is is like the price the fact that like what needs to happen is adobe needs to just buy capture one and smash that into one software the fact that they're competing it makes it like i need elements of capture one live the way that capture one live works with sharing with clients and stuff like that there's elements of the processing engine i think that are better and then in capture one but there's just elements of workflow and understanding and like universal adoption and all this stuff that like it capture one is like an island. There's people who swear by it, but there it's just, it hasn't made maximum density and maximum impact yet. I just wish that like they were cheaper because how many subscriptions a month can we afford? Like for real, I think that they, it, if it was cheaper, it would be like an, and if it, if it was integrated if it integrated with lightroom more like if they, they worked with each other rather than against each other do you remember when apple and 
Windows started to become friends and they were like, okay, Apple programs can run on PCs and PCs can actually, the operating system can run on a Windows machine. And you know what? Photoshop can work on an on a Apple machine and a Windows machine. Like when computers stopped warring, like, no, this is a Mac proprietary thing or a Windows, like when they stopped warring, everything sort of became better. Now, sad thing is, is that creative programs should have never crossed over <laughs> to PCs because it just it just split the industry because there's a whole bunch of photographers that are on pcs and it's just like oh my god but that's another argument we're not going to get into you and your pc because you love it we're going to talk about um other things and not the pc mac argument because pc people who love their pc will go to the mat on something that like imagine every magazine on max every art director on a mac every designer on a mac every photo editor on a mac the entire creative industry on a mac 90 percent of photographers on max but you're on a pc what does that say about you it says that you don't want to you don't want to be in the industry you want to do your own thing what does it also say about you you cut corners because PCs are cheaper. So people are like, I want the cheaper thing that kind of does the same thing. So it shows that you cut corners and you don't, you're not a team player. Every, all Macs, they speak together. They work together. It's like an ecosystem, but you're like, no, I want mine to be over here. Okay. I don't like Apple. It's like, okay. <laughs> whatever your trauma is with Apple or your reasons or whatever. Okay. But it's like, but the industry runs this way and you want to be in the industry. Okay. You want to be in the industry. The industry runs this way. You're on a PC. The industry's on max. You don't want to cross over. Okay. How long do you think it's going to take before you actually finally decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm actually going to play on. It's like, I'm going to play softball. Everyone else is playing baseball. No, I like softball. I'm going to play softball. Okay. Do you think you're going to get called over to the bigs to play this when you're not even speaking the same language? Anyways, um, guys, that's enough of PC Max. I hope this brought you value. Let's get into photos in the week. Let's get into photos of the week, which I have a few that really just hit the mark out of the, out of the park for me. I feel like it's necessary for, I think it's necessary for, for um, people who are submitting photos, who are paying for the submission level, like you're paying to do this. Do this for you. Like do not mail in any submissions. Do not mail them in and not, not like for me, because again, I'll say, I know this stuff already. I'm asking you not to mail it in because when you mail it in, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. You're doing yourself a huge disservice and that disservice, like it's not moving your needle. It's not moving your needle this week. Sadly, sadly this week. I have one photo of the week, one, one photo of the week. And that photographer not only gets photo of the week, but they also get best in show because I, I was not impressed by the second half of the submissions. I was not blown away by the level of the work. And the reason that I'm not blown away is because I know that you can do better. I know that you can do better because you've shown me better before you've shown me better. And if your work is becoming less than it was before, that's on you. That's not on me. I'm doing the same information and I'm giving you the same information and I'm reminding you information that I've talked about before that you've agreed to and you're not listening to. So I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. I have one photographer that blew me away, one. And I am giving this photographer all the accolades, all the praise and all the love this week because this photographer knocked it out of the park. They had a story and they killed it. This photographer that wins photo of the week. His name is Alpha Monk. Congratulations, you win photo of the week. Cardi approved and also, also you win best in show. Best in show. And you know what? You don't want to win best in show because no one else was even close. You win best in show because even if you had tough competition, you still would have won best in show and you still would have won photo of the week because your work here is so monumentally better. And each time you submit your work becomes better. 
I want to help you, Alpha Monk. You are a no BS shooter. Thank you for taking this shit seriously, and thank you for hitting that out of the park. Guys, everybody else, I don't know. Am I too much? Am I too much? My views are down. Does it mean that I'm given too much truth? Am I delivering information that's too hard to take? It's like, for me, I'm here. Whether I have 10,000 views on my episodes or whether I have 100 views on my episode. If I help one person become a better photographer, I'll do this. But you have to understand, like, I get frustrated when I put out amazing content and people watch the content, but then it's almost like they don't change after they watch the content. It, it, do I need to hit with bigger hammers? Do I need to hit you over the head harder about these points that I seem to talk about all the time? If you're new to watching me, you better binge. You better binge because there's things that like just mistakes I see over and over and over and over and over again. And um, it makes me frustrated. But again, I'm here at your service. I'm trying my best to not get frustrated. And no, it takes reps when people are older starting this. When you're starting this when you're 60, you're starting this when you're 54, starting this when you're 35. I started this when I was 14. So some of this stuff is just hardwired. I grew up doing this. So if you're starting late and you're not absolutely obsessed about absorbing information, making notes about that information, understanding the information, overstanding the information, and then acting on the information, you're just wasting time. And people who are younger, faster, and actually are listening, acting, and like changing their behavior, they're, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be jumping over you. I want you to be successful. I want you to be successful, which is why I have this channel. I want you to be successful, but you can't mail it in. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. We got a new video coming out. Very excited about my new video. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you subscribed today, I thank you. I appreciate you. If you came over from Instagram today, I thank you. I thank you. If you came over from Instagram, leave a comment. If you came over from Instagram, I'm still trying to figure out if this whole streaming live to Instagram and on YouTube at the same time is actually even worth it. I'll stop if it's not worth it. Like if nobody's watching me, there's no point in me doing this. I'll just stream on YouTube where people are watching me, you know? One thing that I know for sure is, hello, that button's not working. Hey, where's my button? Stream done. One thing I know is that this whole photography business, <laughs> it's a grind. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching me. I'm still, I guess I gotta fix some buttons here cause this overlay ain't working. I appreciate you guys for watching me today. I'll see you on the next one.